Good evening again, everyone. No decisions were made in the executive session. We will now make a motion to go back into open session. Yeah, I'll have a motion, motion that we go back, back in open session. session. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to go back in open session. All in favor, let me know my raising your right hand. Any opposers? There aren't any. We're now back into open session. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve school year 20, 21, 22 future contracts as were presented to us by Dr. McCord. Second. A motion on the floor. Yeah, and a second to approve the 2021-2022 teacher contract. Any questions? All in favor, let me know by raising your right hand. Any opposed? There aren't any. Enjoy. Uh, points of celebration. Okay, I'm going to uh, excitedly ask that uh, Coach Brace, is he in there? Oh, he looks like a youngster since he got his hair cut. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask Coach Brace to come up and introduce the team. And if you all would please stand and join me as we celebrate the 2021 Class 3A Basketball Men's Champion. Let's give him a round of applause. And so, Coach Brace, I'm going to let you uh, talk a little bit about the team, the accomplishments. Uh, as you know, uh, two weeks ago, this was one and done. And uh, since we don't have a regular board meeting until April 19th, we can celebrate again. We want to go ahead and do it now. Yeah. Uh, well, first, I'd like to thank God you know, for being here. And thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Uh, because if I wasn't ever given the opportunity, I wouldn't be at this point where I'm at now. So I just, I'm just thankful for that. Um, it's been a long road. I mean, we started out at the bottom, as you all know. Um, we started out from the bottom, and we just kept believing, and we trusted the process, kept putting in the work, and, you know, year by year, we got better and better, and this is the year that we knew that we could do it. Um, we had a good chance of doing it last year. It came up short. I think that was just part of the process, and um, this year was the year that we knew that we would be able to get over the hump, um, so we did it. Um, you know, it was a lot of nail by the games. It was an exciting season, and we went through a lot during the season, you know, with, you know being in a, uh, in a pandemic. Um, so, you know, just going through that. And I had a, a first newborn, so, you know, me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know, me trying to, you know, take care of my family and balance that and, you know, coming here, you know, trying to make sure everything is straight with the basketball team and work and stuff. You know, it was, it was hard, but we made it through, and, you know, it was all worth it for a state championship. Um, but, you know, I think that we really got a good foundation of a good young men, and I think that this is just the beginning. Um, you know, we got a lot of good, you know, young, young kids in the program. Um, it's exciting that, you know, we achieved this accomplishment, but I know that they're still hungry for more. Um, I know that they appreciate how the community showed their support, you know, um, you know how, they, how they did, and, you know, it was just an overwhelming feeling. It was a wonderful feeling. I never experienced a state championship. In high school, um, I, I was actually one game away from playing Marlboro County in the state championship the last time that they went. And um, so it's just crazy that I'm here coaching now and we've won a state championship. Um, but I just talked more about these boys because um, they're the one that put in all the work and went out there and played. So I just introduced them one by one. Um, we got Junior, Keon, Adam. Let me get them to stand up. Senior Devante Oliver. And senior Tyler. And junior Kamari. And junior Pedro. And junior Caleb. And senior Dre. And Coach. Buster, <laughs> Coach Purvis, Coach Rod, and senior uh, son, freshman Jalen, sophomore Prince, senior Ethan, and uh, we also have a uh, Sophomore that's missing, no junior that's missing, part three. And another junior, Karen. 
On behalf of the entire board, and especially for myself, I just want to thank you all guys and just don't know how proud I am of you and your accomplishment. I have to go to work every day and work with people from Chesterfield County, Hartsfield, Dallas, and Florence, Scotland County. Well, I, I'm going to work. When I get to back to work, I'm going with a state <laughs> I will have bragging rights for the next year. So, guys, uh, we're truly tremendously proud of you, and I, I just feel good all over that. Right <laughs> yep. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I think it was a few days back when I began to take a look over the season and things that occurred 
I didn't even share it with nobody, Coach Brace or nothing, but I'm quite sure he'll remember certain things. We understand numbers have meaning. And what hit me was this year, and I told Coach Brace it was destined. Me and Coach Gerard talked about it since day one. We talked about it. And when I began to look at this year's accomplishment, the two losses we had was by five points. And if you don't know, five represents grace. God's unmerited favor. And then to get to the championship, we won by five points. Still favor, grace. But then on top of that, we won the championship by 11 points. Now, if you add that up, that's 21. Now, divide that by the three years prior to this year gives you seven. Seven is a number of completion. Now, this is his fourth year. Now, we know seasons are in four. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. So, I know it was destined and you were seasoned and the coaching staff and the kids were seasoned to complete this task that we had before us. So sometimes you can't see the writing on the wall in the beginning. But when you look back over and think things over, it was destined for us to be right where we are right now. So I thank God for all of you, Coach Brace, all the coaches, the county, the board members, everybody that I know kept these kids in their prayers and kept saying that they had a determination to win. We was destined to be where we are right now. Congratulations, fellas. Uh, do, do me a favor. Call those numbers out again. I'm trying. I got just enough time. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. for discussion. Uh, there will be no public comments today. We will resume our uh, next regular scheduled board meeting. Board item for discussion. Superintendent's report. Go three fiscal responsibility. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to have uh, Sharon Hubbard, our CFO, come forward and uh, we'll get the lights. She is going to present a draft. And what I mean by draft, uh, this is, as you all know, the beginning of the budget season. And so, uh, we start off by giving you preliminary talks, and from that point, uh, there's a lot of discussion. And between here and the second meeting in June, we will finalize our budget. So uh, this is information that I think uh, everyone should be uh, prepared to receive uh, with full well knowledge of knowing that uh, this is a draft, and we will continue until we get it right. Thank you, Dr. McCord. Good evening to, to our Board of Trustees, Superintendent McCord. Uh, this is our first budget work session. And I would like to start out with, um, before we get into bud the budget workshop, we'd like to talk about the teacher staff increase that has been funded by the state. Turn the mic, 
As you know, in this month, in this month, the governor signed uh, legislation to increase our teacher step. So uh, the governor has signed that in legislation in the month of March, this month. The school district will receive funding based on our numbers in PCS, which includes fringe. So we will get the salary portion as well as fringe for that step increase. All eligible certified staff will be receiving this uh, teacher step increase if they fulfill their requirements as of March 1st. Lump sum payments will be paid on or before our June 15, 2021 payroll. And also I would like to remind you that any eligible certified staff who are on the salary schedules on years zero through two and after year 25 will not receive the step increase. Now, we do have employees that are not covered under this legislation, age 3609, uh, like principals, assistant principals, directors who are certified, as well as our non-certified staff being uh, custodians, food services, food service staff, board, excuse me, bus drivers, TAs, and as such, if we were to uh, pay a step increase for those individuals, that would be the cost. Certified staff, 61,000. Non-certified staff, 178,000. Do you have any questions regarding the step increase? I, I do want to note, too, that this money will come from this current year's budget. So uh, when, when the money goes out on June 15th, this isn't reimbursed. We actually pay this out of our general funds on June 15th. This is the total cost. Yes, sir. That's step increase plus benefits. Okay, so for our budget workshop, we'd like to talk about our budget priorities for next year's budget. Um, we want to bridge the gap in learning loss in, our, in those core areas, including attendance. We also want to provide a safe and conducive learning environment throughout the district due to our pandemic that's going on now. And we plan to address those uh, priorities in our ESSA 2 funding, which we are slated to receive $8.8 .8 million. In this budget, we also want to provide a living wage for all employees so that we can attract and retain highly qualified staff. We also want to uh, implement competitive pay scales to recognize de degree advancements for all certified positions. And we're also going to be restoring uh, our retiree salaries completely. I can speak on that. Uh, if you recall, for the past two years that I've been here, it's been mentioned that our retirees are frozen at step 14, I believe. Uh, is it 14? 14. So that's 14 with uh, just a, a degree. Bachelor's. No, no advanced degrees, just 14 years. That was something that was done prior to my arrival, and we have not been able to move past that. Well, the state uh, proviso that said that teacher contracts could be negotiated for retirees, that clause sunsetted last year because of COVID. We did not have to make the adjustment, but now, uh, post-COVID, we have to make that adjustment. And we gave that figure last year, it would have been about 271000 and you'll see in the uh, slides coming up, I think this year, for next year, it'll be about 340000 somewhere in that area. So we're, we're actually doing what, what we have to do now, and that is uh, bring retirees salaries up to where they would be if they were considered non-retirees. However, uh, this will come up later on down the road because we don't provide uh, contracts to retirees until the last set of contracts to go out. We'll have to discuss a few things with that too. Thank you. 
Okay, so moving on to financing considerations for next year's budget, I would like to remind the board that our district's um, operating millage is currently at 185 meals, and our current debt service meal is at 33 meals with a total of 218 meals. And I also would like to remind you that the district has not increased millage rates for over about 10 years now. The county is in reassessment this um, year, and each debt service meal is worth about $50,000. Would also like to remind the board that we are now currently operating under a continuing resolution for this year's budget. And I also would like to remind you that the use of our ESSER II funding will be used to fund capital projects, learning initiatives, and some staffing support uh, for these one-time funds that will expire September 2023. Yeah, talk to that, talk to the microphone. The ESSER funding money can only be used for capital projects, right, uh, for no, ESSER money, if you remember, it started out with 12 pots, and then they added three additional pots. And so we're going to <clears throat> try to address as much as we can with the ESSER money. Uh, the state has provided us uh, what I call broad flexibility in how we spend these monies. If you go back to um, maybe it was around November, December, we shared with you the amount that we received for the first ESSER, ESSER one money, and then the second round ESSER money, we received almost $9 million. And so uh, we're trying to make as much do with that as we can with the 15 different pots. And so many of the things that we'll talk about as we continue on, um, and when I say continue on for the next couple of months, uh, they, will be, uh, they will be addressed using ESSER money which is a benefit to us because it does not come out of general fund, which allows us to, to hold our money uh, and expand the ESSER account. So that, too, will come as part of our conversations as we move forward. And there are some capital projects that we are completing. If you go back and, and if you recall our last board meeting when uh, it was approved for us to do the football stadium, uh, the monies that we w had had allocated to complete that project because we're able to use ESSER funds for windows, uh, HVAC systems, doors, uh, the things that we had appropriated the funds for, that allowed us to free that money up. Now that money could only be used for capital projects. ESSER money can be used for more than capital projects, but you'll see we are using it for capital projects, and that's where that flexibility comes. Could you give me an example? when it says sub-staffing support on, on what that might entail. What, what kind of staffing are we talking about? So, for, and I'm just going to give you a broad example for learning loss. Uh, let's say we, we wanted to, uh, because of the data reflects, we wanted to decrease class sizes. So as you all know, and if you don't, you'll see this in our presentations over the next few months, uh, the staff, the student enrollment is declining. So when student enrollment declines, guess what also declines? The money. So in order for us to not, to not lose staff positions, we may fund some of these teaching positions so that we, we don't continue with the learning loss. We may say instead of having uh, 26 kids per classroom, we seek to have 13 kids per classroom, and we need one additional FTE. So the cost for a teacher costs or salary and benefits would come out of the ESSER funds. Okay. And, we, and we have a broad uh, umbrella for which we can use that as well. And again, as we continue to learn, uh, we plan to do that. Uh, we have the flexibility to adjust and amend uh, as, as, as is approved, and we're going to make the most of that $9 million. I can promise you that. So this is our projected revenue for 21 and 22. We start with a budget this year of $34,818,102. And our projected revenue for next year's budget is $35,518,930. And it's divided into local, state, and federal funds. 
um, ad valorem taxes and penalty and interest, revenue in lieu of taxes. Those numbers are the same because we don't have those numbers yet from the county. Our state, however, we do have some numbers uh, on our EFA and our fringe and salary reimbursements and state shared tax revenue, which include our tier one, two, and three money, our merchant, activity, merchant inventory and other state revenues, and then our retirement, retirement credit, we don't receive that revenue projection until uh, July, August. So we, if we are estimating that we're gonna receive the same as this year. Our indirect cost, which uh, is derived from our federal programs that we have in house, uh, we also estimate that to be as 2021 projection of $275,000. So our increases are in the state funding, slight increases. Our projected revenues for 2021, of course we had a balanced budget for 2021, but our projected increase for 21-22 is $36,979,000. And that is attributed to the 5% salary and the one step, in, step increase with fringe. And we're gonna talk about that later in the, uh, the, the uh, budget. This is just a breakdown, another breakdown for expenditures by location, our pre-K through eight schools with our high school and vocational and other, which includes district. See that total for 34 million 18 for 2021 year, and we project to expand 36 million 979 thousand dollars for 21-22. I can't hear you. The seven million. What would the other be? Uh other be like the um, our district office. The, those are locations now. District office, annex building. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying it costs it cost about that much to run those buildings. That is year. correct. Right. And and you'll see a, a, a more detailed breakdown. Uh, we have fixed costs um, that you'll see again as we flesh this out. This is just the beginning, okay. but it gets more detailed as we go along with it. And, and what we can do for the two uh, new board members, uh, Ms. Hubbard, is provide them with a copy of uh, last year's board, I'm sorry, last year's board approved budget so they can see, I mean, it's a lot of numbers about this state, but at the end of the day, you want to see it do this. Yeah. We'll get those to you tomorrow when we have them available. All right, and now. Okay, moving on. Um, so our shortfall, our estimated shortfall would be for next year would be $1.4 million. And again, that is attributed to the 5% increase in salaries and as well as the step increase. And some minor changes in our purchase services and supplies. Okay, so this is the cost for our certified, non-certified 5% raise. Um, the school district's cost for the 5% raise for all staff is $1.3 million, of which a 5% raise for certified staff will equate to approximately $947,000, which in also includes benefits. So the total cost of the step increase and the five percent raise is approximately two point with two million, a little over two million dollars. Now going over the um, the shortfall, how to address the shortfall in the in next year's budget is to consolidate positions through attrition, transfer funds from the fund balance, 
Our current fund balance at June 30th, 2020 is $7,351,038. So we have, I'm sorry. What percentage are we at with the fund balance with that $7 million? About 15%. 15, no, no. 15 to 23%, I'm We're sorry. about 23%. 23%, I'm sorry. 23%? Mm -hmm. Correct. Seven million is twenty three percent. We need to be at fifteen, to be at least fifteen. Fifteen of that. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. And fifteen percent of that is about five million dollars. So we're over the uh, balance that we should be for fund balance. And, and you know, before we uh, go too far into that, um, let me just say that with this, we have to look at the first uh, bullet. Uh, we we may not have to get to the point where we. Uh, ask to borrow that money or remove that money from fund balance because we're going to do some pairing. Uh, we're not looking to cut positions, so let me say that. We're not cutting positions, but through retirement and attrition, uh, we're going to make the most of our staff. And all that simply means is this is actually the best time to do so uh, because we know, we know our numbers are declining. We know that uh, there's been a uh, one steps out and we plug in someone else. That's been the mindset for quite some time, but uh, we, we plan on bringing something back to you that shows where some of these cuts may come and how that will impact this, this bottom, bottom line. A uh, question. With the consolidation of positions, how would that affect the pay of the person who gets additional duties? And that's a great question. Um, and that's why we're looking to uh, bring to you to increase salaries uh, by 5%. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't think you'll find anyone that says I'm, I'm overworked. Uh, but we do know that there are some positions that can be collapsed. Um, and then because of staffing numbers, uh, we know that there are some, some sites that have more than they, they would typically get uh, based on, on state numbers and based on state averages. But that's been the pleasure of the board to say, hey, uh, one person left, let's plug in another person. And it may not have been necessarily needed to plug in another person. And we'll talk more about that as we move along, but I'll give an example. If we have a school that has uh, under 400 enrollment, uh, we, we have, and I say we because I've been here for two years, uh, we have said, hey, uh, we're going to have a principal, an assistant principal, a guidance counselor, and we've now added on social workers, right? Whereas uh, under 400, uh, you should be able to run a building uh, with a principal and a guidance counselor. You should be able to run the building because of the additional help that we have. Uh, we have uh, social workers now. We also have parent educators uh, that are helping and assisting our principals. And so these are just some things to think about, not to go into great detail about it, but those are some things uh, that'll be presented to you as we continue to move forward. As we have addressed our budgets, are we, this budget will work either way, whether we're going back in school full time or whether we're just like we are before. We go back into our COVID mode as far as, you know, yes, someone sir. being home two days. This budget will address it either way, is what we're doing, yes, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Also, I would like to remind you that the year fund purchasing cutoff is March 31st, 2021. 